Hey everyone, so today we'll be covering an SAT math concept that is 100% going to show up on your exam. So the topic is going to be quadratics and I've picked out a practice problem to do because I think this one really represents um, the types of theorems and ideas that you need to have in your head when approaching these problems. In the given quadratic function, A and C are constants. Uh, the graph of y equals f of x in the xy plane is a parabola that opens upward and has a vertex at the point hk where h and k are constants. If k is a negative, because it's under zero, and f of negative nine equals f of three, which of the following must be true? And they give us two clauses. Um, so the first thing I want to point out is, let me just write this, and I'm using another color, I'll use purple. So it says that the parabola opens upwards, right? So a parabola that opens upwards means the A value has to be positive. Now the second clause here does satisfy that, except it's not accounting for those values like 0 0.5, right? Like 0 0.5 is still a positive number, um, but it's just not equal to or greater than one. And so we can't really verify the second clause unless we solve it mathematically. And we can't because they give us this information, f of negative nine equals f of three. So the standard equation to give us is ax squared plus 4x plus c, right? And they give us uh, the x coordinates, basically. So we can plug in negative 9 for x. So negative 9 squared is 81. And we'll just say 81a because we're solving for a, right? Plus 4x. So 4 times x would just be negative 36. So plus negative 36 plus c. And what you'll realize there is we'll set this equal to f of 3. So if we plug in 3 for x, we get uh, 9a plus 12 plus c. So this is the interesting part, is that the c's actually cancel out on both sides. And so now we're just left with one variable, and that one variable is a. And so we can solve for a. Let's add 36 on this side and subtract 9a on that side. So we get 72a equals 48. Divide both sides by 72. We get a equals 48 over 72. So therefore, we can actually eliminate that second clause because that is not true. A does not have to be uh, equal to or greater than 1. We just proved here that the A value is a decimal value. It's positive. It's under 1, but it's still positive. Um, so now what we need to do is prove the first clause, right? So it is this first clause true? Well, we already have the standard equation here, and we know the A value, so let's just write out what we know. So we have 48 over 72, x squared plus 4x plus c equals something. So the problem here is we have too many missing variables, right? We need a value to plug in for x, except we don't know c, so we can't find whatever the outcome is, the y value. But we, what we do know is that they've given us this information. K has to be a negative. What is K? K is the negative, uh, sorry, K is the Y coordinate of the vertex, right? And so the vertex has both X and Y coordinates. And so H, what is H? H is the X coordinate of the vertex. So if we can find the value of H, we can plug it into this equation down here and see if the generalization is true to solve for C. So how do we find H? Well, it's actually pretty interesting because the parabola is symmetrical, right? And we know these two, f of negative 9 and f of 3, they're equal to each other. They have the same y coordinate values. And so their corresponding x coordinate values are going to be equal distant away from the vertex. And so what we can do is just do negative 9 plus 3 over 2. We're just finding the middle of those x coordinates. So this gives us negative 6 over 2. That's negative 3. So now we have the h value, the x coordinate of the vertex. So we can plug this negative three into our equation. So we have x squared, so negative three squared times 48, 72, and then plus four times negative three would give us negative 12, plus c, we don't know what that is, is equivalent to k, we know k has to be negative, let's keep that in mind. So this would be nine, negative three squared is nine times 42 over 72, would give us six, oops, that'll give us six, plus 12, uh, negative 12, so just minus 12, plus c equals k. So this simplifies out to 
a value of negative 6 plus c equals k or c minus 6 equals k. So let's see what the clause says. So it says uh, the restriction is that c has to be a negative number. Now, is that true? Well, if we were to plug in a negative number for c, let's say I'm going to pick a random one, like neg negative 3. Negative 3 minus 6 equals negative 9. Well, negative 9 is a negative number, and we know k has to be a negative number. However, if we plugged in a positive value for c, would this equation work? Well, if we plugged in, let's say, 5, 5 minus 6 is negative 1. Well, now c is a positive number, and we still got a negative k, which means that the first clause right here is not true. So boom, boom, boom. First clause, not true. A lot is going on the screen, but the answer is going to be D. And yeah, I hope you guys learned something and thank you for watching. Make sure you check out the other SAT math problems we have on our channel and have a good day.